Hey guys, today we have this. This is a diagnostic interface from Xtool. It's called IP508. It has some cool features and it supports a lot of vehicles. We are going to test it here in Gold Mark 7 as well as in Fiat Punto, which is over here, and in BMW X1, which is way over there. So we have three different vehicles and we will check how this device works. So let's quickly go through the box and then we are going to start doing things. So the device looks like, like this. It's a tablet. We also have OBD cable, USB cable, USB power brick, and some adapters over here. Okay, so let's turn it on and let's check what do we have over here. At the top we have USB port, we have the uh, diagnostic port, we have a power connector over here and there's a power button. So let's press and hold it and give it a few seconds to uh, start. Um, those grips are rubber. Yeah, we have five inch touch display. There's a microphone over here and there's a speaker over here. The device works um, um, uh, with Android 10, I believe, and it has two gigs of RAM and about 20 gigs of internal storage. It weighs uh, about half a kilogram and those, grip, those grips are really comfortable, I have to say. Okay, so the device is starting. We can see that the the application is initializing so maybe maybe let's connect the obd2 cable and connect it with the vehicle you can see that uh, we have the application actually on right now there are there are nine updates uh, right now i'm not going to update it i have to say that those updates are pretty frequent so they are they are keeping it up to date and they claim um, those updates are um, uh, free lifetime free for you Okay, so um, pretty much the first use is turn it on, connect it to your Wi-Fi. There's built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth over here. Um, update the application, update the packages over here that supports the vehicle, and then you can connect it with your vehicle via the OBD2 port. So let's do right. Uh, let's do it right now. You can see that I'm connected and we can see that the device is charging. There's built-in battery, but you can charge it via USB or via the OBD2 connector. So whenever you are connected to a vehicle, the battery will charge. So right now, let's maybe uh, show you a couple things over here. If we go to settings, we have uh, some language settings, some regional settings over here, as well as your workshop information, which will be useful when you generate a report from your diagnostic session. Um, we have special functions, six of them over here, uh, steering angle sensor, calibration, oil reset, um, electronic park parking brake release, uh, battery monitoring system reset, throttle adaptation, and um, uh, brakes uh, bleeding. So in this this vehicle, maybe let's try the let's try the electronic park parking brake. Okay. So it's a European car. Scroll down, Volkswagen and we are going to select the right model, of course, maybe manual selection. Mm, let's pick 5G, I believe Golf Mark 7 is 5G, uh, yeah, 5G, Golf 213 and after. So let's select it. This vehicle is 215, okay and we are going to release the parking brake. And I know that the, uh, this vehicle does not feature the module 53. Um, the parking brake is controlled by the brakes, by the ABS and ESP. So let's go over here. And we need to know the procedure, of course, which is, uh, I believe, engine off, ignition on, parking brake released, ah, brake. Parking brake released. Parking, uh, um, no, brake released right now. Maybe turn off the climate control and maybe I will open the door so we can hear the, uh, the electric motor that's moving. And right now press one to activate uh, the replacement mode. So let's do this. Okay. You can hear it. Yeah. We have faults over here, of course, because um, 
every time you do something with the ABS module you will have a lot of indications over here and warnings of course and a lot of systems are um, uh, relying on the ABS system so you will not have the adaptive cruise control and your um, uh, tire pressure monitoring system and traction control and so on okay so let's say that we have replaced the brakes right now we want to end the replacement mode so let's press number two okay we can hear it it will mute, move and right now I believe it's done let's wait yeah it's done and we still have those warnings so what we need to do right now is press the brake engage parking brake and well it's still here ah maybe we need to <clears throat> Mm, we need to go back and yeah end of test go back go back go back go back let's trigger the ignition ignition off ignition on and we are good okay so now maybe let's go to fiat and here we are in fiat grande punto van van means that we have this instead of rear seats okay so the device is connected to the diagnostic port over here and we are going to perform a diagnostic scan so let's go to diagnosis instead of the special functions we are going to diagnosis let's select fiat where is it it's here manual selection Grande Punto Van Diesel OK and let's perform uh, automatic scan there are, there's not a lot of mod not a lot of modules over here we have two modules connected the engine control module and the airbags airbags no um, uh, report no drag diagnostic trouble codes but there's something with the uh, engine control module which we are going to check there's a fault EGR valve reports a fault so let's go over here maybe to diagnosis read travel code EGR okay and when we press over here it takes us to your web browser assuming you have internet connection and it will fill in those um, uh, this fault code so you can check for solutions for your vehicle so you have access to internet uh, um, uh, internet message boards with solution maybe possible solution for your problem okay so maybe let's try to clear this code do you want to clear it yeah successfully let's try to read it again there's no trouble code so let's hope that this was just temporary and it will not come back and if it does we will look at it in details so maybe let's check live data over here as well and we have some live data that we can pick from there's a lot 66 different uh, parameters that we can choose from EGR or maybe let's go with this and this let's go to custom and we can go to combine it should combine a graph with those two settings and right now when I rev the engine we should see how the EGR valve opening graph the purple one uh, how it moves it should move so let's yeah it moves it moved well it's staying there so maybe maybe it was stuck and right now I believe it's working kind of right I would have to check the specification of this EGR system to see how it should behave but maybe it was stuck right now it's at 66 percent of the operation um, cycle it's closing when i need it to be closed so maybe maybe it's okay we can also record this okay and we can go back and now we are in bmw x1 e84 
we are connected to the diagnostic port and here we are going to check some live data yeah this should be interesting so let's go to diagnostics let's select bmw and uh, maybe this time let's not manually select the vehicle let's try the automatic uh, identification function so let's press over here and it should check which vehicle is it and what's the version and and so on so we have yeah correctly win number we have the model year we have the uh, model x1 e84 so let's go over here okay and let's check some maybe some turbocharger um, information over here so as soon as it connects we will try to do this okay let's select drive engine and let's maybe let's check fault codes first oh we have some fault codes over here three are in history one is current particulate filter system okay um, so let's go over here read data stream let's select all um, values and we should have a huge list of uh, how many 53 bar parameters so let's take engine speed rpms and somewhere at the end of the list there should be pressure in the intake intake pressure yeah and let's combine those two yeah i i'm revving the vehicle yeah so we can see the red line is the uh, engine speed rpms and the purple one is the intake pressure so we can see how the um, how the turbo charger is um, reacting to the um, to the increased rpm over here and well we are stationary right now so we are not going to build a huge pressure over here with no load on the vehicle but uh, on a road test we should see here if the uh, turbocharger is um, is providing the correct pressure at given load or given rpms okay so let's talk pros and cons first of all there's a lot of brands supported over here actually I'm having a hard time finding something that's not over here, maybe Koenigsegg, but that's a Swedish niche. Okay, uh, second thing, the um, uh, update support over here, those updates are really frequent, once a week maybe, so you have access to it and those updates are free and they claim that those updates will be free and will be um, provided lifetime long. So. The device also works offline, so you don't need internet connection. If you are in underground garage or you are working in the field, well, you can use this device as well. Of course, you will not be able to download those updates when you are um, uh, without internet connection, but still the device is fully, fully fun functional without uh, Wi-Fi. And uh, those reports, though, this is a cool thing. If you go over here and you want to share uh, one of those reports, maybe this one from the BMW that we made. You can just press the share button, type email, press send, and that's pretty much it. You don't even need to log in um, into your email account or something like that. This email will be just sent from the Xtool server to the uh, email address that you just provided. So, so this would be your customer's uh, email address yeah and those um, uh, reports look pretty clean i have to say this is pdf with uh, with those faults and with live data during the scan so that's that's pretty cool actually not sure if i mentioned this but there's no user manual in the box instead you go over here to more user manual and uh, it will take you to acrobat reader with the pdf with the user manual so you have all the information that you would need over here but well i have to say that this device is pretty pretty simple to use as you saw over here with three different vehicles and three different things i've used the special function over here i've made a diagnostic scan in fiat i've checked some live data in bmw all those things are pretty simple over here so yeah, so i don't think you will actually need this user manual and also, since this is running Android, you have full access to Android system. So you can, for example, go and download other apps, for example, videos. 
video player and use it when you have time. Maybe you are wait, uh, waiting for something. Get in, boys! Of course, those speakers are not high quality. They are good enough for diagnostic tool, not good enough for a um, uh, portable cinema. Yeah, but well, I just had to try it. When it comes to cons, well, the screen is pretty small. I believe this is the entry level device, the IP5. The 5 stands for 5 inches, so I believe they have larger displays in other tools, and this is the entry one. Um, still, I would love to have something with a little bit bigger um, display. There's no carrying case for this device. You get this box and that's pretty much it. So you need to keep it in the box or just uh, have it laying around. And this USB port over here is for charging only. I hoped that you can extend the internal memory with it or maybe share those PDF reports from scans directly to USB drive. Uh, to USB drive. But no, this is not possible. This uh, USB port, as far as I know, is only for charging. And and uh, what else? Oh, there's no dark mode. I would love a dark mode over here, especially if you are working in dark places or at night. You would um, you would like to switch the theme to a darker one. Yeah, this can be a little bit too bright in low light conditions. And what's, what else over here? Oh, I know. If you go to settings and you actually want to change the language. Focus, please focus. Maybe let's go to, maybe let's select Polish. Interface is changing, but you are no longer licensed to use those apps. So when you do this, you can see there's no uh, special functions over here. There's no updates over here. Uh, when you do this, when you change language, you actually should contact the support and tell them, well, my device serial number is this, I've changed the language to this, and you need to provide new updates for me. Yeah, so that's a little bit annoying. Yeah, I get it, I get it that this is a safety feature. You, you can see it, yeah, right now we are back in English and we have updates back over here and we have uh, special functions back over here. A little bit annoying, but still, this is this. You are going to do this just once. So overall, it's priced at one fifty nine, and right now you can buy it for one nineteen, which is a great deal, I believe. It's a great tool for independent uh, workshops or for detailing uh, studios. So you need to, for example, um, remove the uh, seats and reset airbag uh, faults afterwards. Or you are working in an independent workshop and you are doing only the popular jobs like brake pads, oil and uh, throttle body and a couple other things. So you have all those, all those uh, popular features over here, the battery replacement, and uh, this device supports all the brands. So you will not uh, be yeah, you you will not be um, missing out on some um, exotic vehicle. Yeah, it should support them all. Well, I have popular vehicles right now over here, so Volkswagen, Fiat, and BMW. But you can see that the support list over here is huge, and updates are frequent. So I believe it will support. Um, every vehicle that will roll into your shop. If you want to check uh, technical details, there are in the description below this video, as well as a link to Amazon. As I said, for a couple days right now, you can buy it for 119 and then 159 Both those prices are great looking at the features and capabilities of this device. So that's it from me for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like this uh, quick uh, review. Subscribe for future ones and see you soon.